This is the QR25DE 2.5 motor that is in the uh, Nissan Sentra Spec V between the years of 2002 and 2005. Okay, it's also in the Altima, but we are dealing with the uh, Spec V right now. I recently redid the entire timing chain job. Brand new phaser gear. Brand new exhaust cam gear that comes with the kit. The phaser gear I had to get separate. Chain, the guys, all the guys' attention, or all that shit, all the seals. I even got these seals. Brand new from Nissan, and these are special O-rings. You can see how they have a slit are separated and they shift you can almost call it a banjo washer in a sense even though it's slightly different this is what this is what creates the the oil pressure it seals the oil so that when um, this piece which is the uh, air intake cam gear solenoid this piece is in here see that and when applied power to it you know they transfer uh, oil they transfer oil in the uh, rest position and when it's activated it transfers it through other channels and it allows the phaser gear to advance or retard the camshaft for that matter advance or retard this is very important and I did it because I was getting a rattling sound on a cold start, which is still to this day, the car's like 20 fucking something years old and still till today, there's all these problems and nobody has exactly pinpointed it. We know that it has head gasket failure a lot. We know it consumes a lot of oil. We know that the uh, air intake camshaft position sensor goes bad all the time. You gotta replace it like at least once a year. Um, and the code, that the ECU gives you is always going to be something related to the mass airflow sensor is going to tell you the uh, air intake cam solenoid and it's always something else okay when I did this whole job and I started the car the rattle was gone and after a week it came back gradually now it's back to where where it was before I did the, the job now I know there's contributing factors this has um, upgraded camshafts and it has harder springs because it's a uh, turbo setup so that's going to create more slack because there's more stress on the chain okay and it creates a little bit more slack on this end it's an aftermarket chain kit therefore the um so i missed some light the uh timing chain tensioner is also aftermarket it just came with the kit maybe a oem one would have lasted longer but but because right there but because it's aftermarket and there's all these contributing factors you know you got all these, these things to consider so what I'm doing I mean there's a little not all the slack is taken up there's still some play here i just took this cover off and i didn't touch or move anything this is from the last the car's been sitting here since the last time i drove it a week ago and i guess that's kind of normal all right but as soon as you crank the engine as soon as it starts cranking that that um timing chain the tension or that plunger should have already had popped out and collected all the slack as soon as possible before the engine cranks and what happens is the engine cranks boom, it starts and you get that rattle for a couple of seconds until the oil pressure builds up as much as it can and it pushes the plunger out the rest of the way thing is it's not it's the plunger on the tensioner isn't popping out soon enough and it's not strong enough and it's brand new this is the old one and this is what it looks like Okay, this spring goes in here. This goes in there. And um, when there is no oil pressure, like when the car's off and you're about to start it, 
there's no oil pressure in there to push this plunger out so it can do its job. So the spring provides adequate tension, okay? Until the oil pressure kicks in. But obviously it's not enough. And Honda's, they, well, there's other makes that also have this feature, but Honda's, for what I've seen, they have, um, even the Skunk 2 makes one that's even more improved as far as these teeth go on the bottom that keep the plunger from getting pushed back in. Now there is a pin, it looks like a, like a, a thumbtack. It's like an oversized thumbtack that when you go to do the installation, the thumbtack, you push it through that little hole and you make sure you push this plunger in far enough that it slides through and it goes through that groove and it holds it in place. You put the two bolts in and install it and when you're done, pull that out and this pops out like a few millimeters and it takes up the slack. But what happens is from that point on, because there's nothing stopping this, there's nothing to determine how deep it goes. It can even go in deeper than what it needs to for installation, all right? And um, the ones for Honda, Skunk 2 makes one with improved teeth and stuff and it's got a little latch to where you want to do the latch to be able to push it in this far and put the pin in it for installation. And once it's released and it pops out, the teeth are activated and it can never go in. You understand the furthest that it'll ever go in is still safe enough to where it's still picking up most of the slack. And this one, you can see here, See how much is popping out and there's still a little bit of slack all right this could be popping out even a little more and this tensioner if i can move it okay which i, I think it might if i'm not holding the camera pick up the rest of the slack so i'm gonna invent something to where that plunger can't go in any more than that and actually i'm gonna make sure that when I create this little mod that I'm doing, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna have to install it slightly different than what's recommended. Cause I'm gonna install it with the plunger already popping out. So that when I crank this car on a cold start, before I have any oil pressure or anything, I'm gonna make sure that that chain is somewhat tight. It should never be loose under any condition. I'm gonna do that. Um, I would like to make the, st the spring even tougher. Um, I did find a few things on Amazon, different springs, and they even have um, boxes with a variety of different springs and gauges. I don't even know how to gauge this one to tell you how strong it is, what the compression rate is on it. As far as millimeters, um, for all I know, the best ones Amazon has is probably no better than what this is. So what I was thinking is I can get a spring that's a little bit wider in diameter to where I can pop this in here and I could still put another spring to other space. I could put another spring around that. It doesn't have to be as strong as this one. It can be half as strong, but the fact of having more tension in there, put that second spring, and yeah, maybe the spring, that second one will be resting on the wall of this cylinder, but that might be okay. We don't, you know, we never need to try it. But for all the work that I did on this engine, and I even painted the block gold, you know, every time I take this engine apart, I do more and more to it. And I'd really hate for it to go to shit. And this is like the fourth time I'm taking shit apart on this engine to work on it. It's as far as I've gotten ready, but that's... What this is all about, I guess. So, I don't know how I'm gonna do it yet, but I'm a pretty good fabricator and I'm used to just starting things without a master plan, just the general idea, and I usually succeed. So, I'm gonna stop this video so I can try and finish what I have set in mind, and I will go ahead and do another video when I am done, whether it worked or not, do a demonstration, doing a cold start.
see if we uh, get the rattling situation taken care of. Alright, thanks for watching. See you later.